Hi, second grade. It's Miss Jeannie now. Um, I tried this video once already and then the phone rang right in the middle of it. So let's try again. All right, I'm back with Clementine and we are going to read chapter five today. But first, just like always, I was looking back at what we've read so far um, and what we read yesterday in chapter four and I was remembering how Clementine found herself in the principal's office and how she was telling the principal that she can't st sit still. She's allergic to sitting still, she says. And she said she compared it to her brother's allergy. He has an allergy to peanuts. So he gets really swollen and itchy and red when he eats peanuts. And she said the same thing happens to her when she sits still. Do you think this is true or do you think it's kind of an over-exaggeration? What do you think? Think in your head. True? Over-exaggeration. I would say it's an over-exaggeration too, just because I don't think you can be allergic to sitting still, even though you might not be able to sit still for a very long time, or you might have a hard time sitting still. You have to focus on it really hard. Um, I also was looking back at some of the pictures to remind myself of what we were reading. That's a really great way to remind yourself of what you read previously, if there are pictures in your book. Um, and I remembered that Clementine, right here, had cut off all her hair so that Margaret didn't feel like she was the only one who didn't have hair on her head, which I don't think was a good choice by Clementine. I don't think she should have cut off her hair, but I think it does show us who Clementine is as a character and it shows us that she does think about others and care about others, which is a really important quality as a person or as a character in a book. So I think it told us a lot about Clementine's character. Let's get into chapter five. I'm excited to see what's gonna happen next. Here's the picture. Chapter five. As soon as I got home, I started watching for Margaret's feet. From my kitchen window, I can see the sidewalk in front of the lobby doors. Since I've memorized all the shoes of everybody who lives in our building, I will always know who's coming in or going out. I might be a detective when I grow up. I waited and I waited and I waited, which is the hardest thing in the world, especially when you have a hot head, which I did because my mother made me wear my winter hat so she didn't have to look at all my chopped off hair. Finally, I saw Margaret's purple sneakers and I ran up to meet her in the lobby. Let me see. Margaret pulled her lips out of the way so I could see all of her teeth. Margaret's mouth was the most beautiful place I had ever seen. It was even more beautiful than Disneyland, Sleeping Beauty's Castle which I'm going to visit when I'm 10. Every tooth had its own sparkly silver bracelet and there were little blue bits sprinkled around like tiny presents. They're rubber bands, Margaret said. Every month I'll go in and they'll change them and they'll give me different colors, whatever I want. That gave me such a good idea. Okay, there's Margaret and there's her teeth and they're calling them bracelets, but they actually are saying the word wrong and they mean braces, but it's just like a funny thing in the book. Okay, that gave me such a good idea. I pulled off my hat to show Margaret that she wasn't the only one, and that made her happy. Then I told her my good idea. You can pick the color of my new hair, whatever color you want. You can draw it on my head. That made her even happier. Those markers are still in my room. Let's go, she said. Is your mother still mad, I asked. Yep, but she's going with, to a movie with Alan this afternoon. Alan is Margaret's mother's special friend which is the word grown-ups use for boyfriend. So we went up to her apartment. Mitchell was there watching TV. When he saw my hair, he grabbed his chest and fell off the couch, pretending to have a heart attack. Then he smacked his forehead and says, you guys are unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable, even though he is older and doesn't have to be so nice to us. I think he likes me. There's Margaret's brother falling off the couch, pretending to have a heart attack. He's like, oh my gosh. Margaret glared at him. Then she jabbed her elbow into my side, so I glared at him too, even though I didn't know why we were doing that. I'm not so sure Margaret is the easy one in that family. She dragged me into her room. I can't wait for summer, she growled. My mother is finally going to get rid of him. You mean baseball camp? He wants to go, Margaret. That's not getting rid of someone. Margaret gave me her... I'm in fourth grade and you're not look. Goodbye and good riddance, she, mother, she muttered. Then she got out my mother's markers. They were all still there and they looked exactly the same. None with the caps chewed up. I don't know how Margaret does that. 
She picked a bright green one and colored my hair, then drew some curls on my forehead and my neck. No pointy lines, I reminded her, just round ones. Thinking about pointy lines made me wonder about Margaret's bracelets again. How do they feel? I bet they're full of pointy parts. Nope, they feel like heaven, Margaret said. No pointy parts at all. They're as soft as rabbit ears, baby rabbit ears. Too bad you can't have them. She kept her lips stretched out of the way to show me her teeth the whole time she talked, so it was kind of hard to understand her, but I did. I'm getting them too, I said, next week. Then I pulled my hat back on and ran down to my apartment quick to make this be a non-lie. I need bracelets on my teeth, I told my mom. They're beautiful and they feel wonderful. First of all, my mother said, they don't feel wonderful. Not in the beginning anyway. Margaret's mother stopped in earlier, asking if we had any medicine left over from when your brother was teething. She told me Margaret cried all the way home. That Margaret. Well, I still want them next week. And second of all, you don't need them. Your teeth are straight enough. Which is the most unfair thing I have ever heard. I could feel them bending, I said, and suddenly I could. So we'd better make an appointment. Then, before my mom could get to third of all, which is usually the worst one. We heard my brother walking, waking up from his nap. I'm coming, Radish, I called to him. Go for a walk, he, sa he asked. Then I came into his room. You're lucky to have me for a big sister, I told him. I have to remind him of this every day because he forgets. We went into the kitchen and I got out the walk. Nobody invented this trick for me when I was little. Then he climbed into the walk and grabbed the handles and, get, and I gave him a really good spin. He went whirling around, bumping into cabinets, and then he got out and walked wobbly until he fell over, which he thinks is the funniest thing in the world. So here's a picture. He's in a walk, which is spelled W-O-K, walk. So a walk is different than like walking. A walk is a big pan. It looks like this. It's like a giant pan that you used to cook in. That is a walk. And so he's playing in the walk, sitting in it and spinning around. He has a really, really big, kind of like a bowl or a pan that you could cook in. All right. Again, he yelled, but I didn't spin him again because he throws up on the second ride and somebody has to clean it, which is N-O-T, not me. This is called being responsible. He came over to me and pulled off my hat and pointed to my head. Green! And I thought about something. First, Margaret had straight brown hair, and we didn't look alike. Then we cut it off and colored it red, so we sort of did. Then she got bracelets on her teeth, which meant we didn't look alike. But soon her teeth would be straight, and we would. Except now I had a green head. What if we never looked alike? What if we did? And that is the end of chapter five. Be on the lookout in Google Classroom for a vocabulary word and also be on the lookout for a comprehension question. You can answer that in your journal or in the Google Classroom. Either way is fine. And we will see you here tomorrow for chapter six. Bye.